faults of character and disposition, Mr. Brocklehurst, should she be admitted into Lowood School, I should be glad if the teachers were instructed to keep a strict eye on her. Do you know where children dwell? Don't obey their elders well. Whose feet are swift, who falsehoods tell? They go to the devil down in hell. Fire and brimstone wait for those whose hearts are wicked. Fear and tremble. Piety alone will save your soul. If you do not I saved this for you. You should eat something. Why do you stay with a girl whom everyone believes to be a liar? Everyone seems too short to be nursing animosity or registering wrongs. Look, it is only Miss Temple. I came on purpose to find you, Jane Eyre. I see you have met Helen, who should be resting. Yes, ma'am. Keep them safe from all harm. Safe in your arms to Then are you awake? Is it you, Jane? Why are you come here? I came to see you, Helen. Miss Temple says you are very ill, and I couldn't sleep until I had seen to you. You came to say goodbye then. You are just in time, probably. Are you going to? Tomorrow in heaven, please shine down. Miss Eyre? Yes. How do you do, my dear? Mrs. Mrs. Fairfax, I suppose. Your yes, journey. you are right. I had the room next to mine prepared for you. It's only a small apartment, but I thought you would like it better than one of the large front chambers. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? What? Did you hear that strange laugh? Oh, oh yes, that must be Grace Crawford. Do you examine me, Miss Eyre? Do you think me handsome? <laughs> no, sir. I was quite your equal at 18, but I was thrust onto a wrong track at one in 20. Fate has wronged me, Miss Eyre. Happiness denied me. But I have a right to get pleasure out of life, and I will get it. Despite my wasted youth, the future lies before me. Perhaps another chance to walk free in the sunlight. Or is this prison mine forever? A cold and empty cell. 
Mr. Rochester! Wake up, sir! Please wake up! Did you see anything when you opened your door? No, sir. Only the candlestick on the ground. And I heard a laugh. I knew you would do me good. At some time, in some way, I knew that look in your eyes could not strike such delight in my heart for nothing. I'm glad I happened to be awake. Nothing. Go then, Jane. Go. Wee bit of excitement here. To be sure. Although like this, it's a wonder the whole thing didn't come down on top of us. Well, uh, I'm glad you're all right. Me too. Uh, here. Ahem. Bats in the belfry, rats in the attic, steps in the hallway, laughter in the dark. You can't imagine what you will find one floor away. There's madness up the stairs, lunacy and extraordinaire. Bats in the belfry, rats in the attic, steps in the hallway, laughter in the dark. is a general favorite. The ladies are very fond of him. <laughs> Any lady in particular? Miss Blanche Ingram. Blanche Ingram? Yes, so beautiful and accomplished. I saw them make up every bed. We'll have a house full. What? He's bringing home enough to fill the hall. Sweep the floor and scrub the stairs and everywhere the is on his way. All the silver till it shines. Hope and dust will be the masters on his, his way. I have given you no salary and you cannot travel without money. How much have you in the world, Jane? Five shillings, sir. <laughs> Five shillings. It's 50 pounds. But, sir, you owe me only 15. I have no change. Ah, it's 10. Is that not plenty? Yes, sir, but now you owe me five. <laughs> I have twice done you wrong, which I regret now. Read it. Read it. <laughs> Providence has blessed my endeavors, and as I am unmarried and childless, I wish to adopt her during my life and to bequeath to her at my death whatever I may have to leave. I am, madam, etc., etc., John Eyre, Madeira. It is dated three years ago. Why did I never hear of this? I, I wrote to him and told him you were dead. Yes, Jane. You have as good as informed me, sir, that you will shortly be married. Yes. What then? Then Adele ought to go to school, and I must seek another situation. Trust this quest of a situation to me. Very well. 
Welcome home, Jane. And your winter's past and gone. The spring begins anew. In past years green Where grows the with love Oh, don't mention governesses. The very word makes me nervous. I have suffered a martyrdom from their incompetency and caprice. <laughs> some good. Richard, what on earth possessed you? I told you to wait for me. She said the most dreadful things. I, I thought I could have done some good. Oh, give in, would you? I can't take much more of this. You've got to marry me, Sophie. Well, what I want with the common stable land. Just look at you. Pardon me, miss. I'm just a simple man. With sunburn on my face and weathered hands. In the arms of just a simple in love with just a simple man. Pity. No sooner have you got settled in a place than a voice calls for you to rise and move on. Must I move on, sir? Yes, Jane, I believe indeed you must. Forever. I see the necessity of departure, and it is like looking upon the necessity of death. And where do you see the necessity? Where? In the shape of Miss Ingram, your bride. Bride? What bride? I have no bride. But you will have. <laughs> yes, I will. I will. Then I must go. I can never again come to your side. I am torn away now and cannot return. It is only you I intend to marry. Your bride stands between us. My bride is here because my equal is here and my likeness. Jane, will you marry me? Are you in earnest? Yes. Yes, I swear it. Then, sir, I will marry you. Make my happiness. I will make you ask. That if either of you know of any impediment, why you may not lawfully be joined together in matrimony. Mason. Mr. Rochester was married to Bertha Antoinette Mason in Spanish Town, Jamaica, some 15 years since. I am her brother. I'm sorry, Edward. Close your book, clergyman. There will be no wedding today. She is my wife. The girl knew nothing of this. She thought all was fair and legal and never dreamt that she was to be trapped in a feigned union with a defrauded wretch. Come, come all of you and meet my wife. Judge me if you dare, priest. But remember with what judgment ye judge, ye shall also be judged. No! Oh. Off with you, all of you. I must shut up my prize. Oh. 
Jane. 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 What account can you give of yourself? You are too inquisitive, St. John. I have nothing to tell. Indeed. Yet if I know nothing about you, I cannot help you. God and nature intended you for a missionary's wife. A missionary's wife you must, you shall be. I claim you. Is the life of a missionary wife. Oh, well said, St. John. What girl could resist such an offer? You talk as though she were a plow horse. Look at her. She'll be squashed flat by an elephant in the streets of Calcutta. In scorching heat, in burning sand, forsaken in a forsaken land. Is your life to God? There is no, no need holding to holding back, no sacrifice to break. She's finally. The time has come, but remember this. Piety alone will save your soul. You think of Mr. Rochester. You have not told me all. You know more of Mr. Rochester than you have disclosed. Tell me what you know. Only this. On the very night you left, the lunatic of a wife set fire to the house. She perished in the blaze. There is nothing left of Thornfield. And Mr. Rochester, is he dead? Tell me, is he dead? Jane. Jane. Edward. Jane? I must know what has become of him. He's blind, Miss Eyre. Stone blind. Who is it? Who speaks? Jane, my own Jane. Yes. Sure. 